How you doing? My name is Lou Diaz. I'm a mix engineer producer based out of Miami, Florida. I've been mixing and producing for 25 years, and I'm about to show you some uh, tips and tricks on doing some uh, hip-hop vocals. So Tony Mike's vocals for the song that he provided, which is called Paradise, they were recorded in South Jersey, and then some of them were also recorded in Astro Studios, which we're in right now, and the rest of his project was done also in Miami. Let me play this session for you guys so you guys get familiar with the song and get to know uh, how the vocal sounds. Balenciaga's, I went out and got it. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep in the. Lucky for me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Don't do the gossip. Back on my own, I done earned my respect and I tripled the profits. Tripled the profits. When I mix vocals, to me, like the, the main thing is control. So anything that's bothering you out of the vocal, like when you listen to a vocal, you open up a session, first thing I do is listen to the vocal and just listen to frequencies that are jumping out at me that may be you know, hurting my ears. So believe it or not, I will actually turn the vocal really loud and listen to it at a really, really loud level and see and listen to the things and areas that, that, are, that are bothering me. First thing I'll do is run, like for example, like this, uh, this Emo Q4, and it's just to take a little bit of that say from like 50 hertz all the way down, mainly because you may be on a system like this, a pair of NS10s, or you may be mixing at home, and you're not hearing uh, 40 hertz or, or, or 30, very low sub-frequencies, and then you may let the mix go, and then you go to a club, and suddenly you hear this flutter or something, that's because that was happening in the vocal. You never know where these vocals are recorded, and you just assume that, you know what, let's just wipe those frequencies out and get them out of there. And then the next thing I do is the C6. Obviously, it's to target all these little frequencies that bother me about the vocal, and I'm able to sort of get my first wave of getting that vocal under control. So here is the C6 bypassed. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep in the. Lucky for me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Don't do the gossip. Back. So when you listen to that vocal, you have to start hearing what's bothering you about the vocal. The first thing I do is use a C6 to tailor the sections that bother me. So what I love about it is I'm able to trim back and I have the choice of having you know, a bandwidth, I'm, I have the choice of an attack time, I have a choice of a release time just for that one frequency. And the envelope, I can actually make it a wider compression. And so what happens is, for example, here, I'm going to solo it real quick so you can hear the the frequency I'm trying to pull back. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Now, the great thing about it is you're able to, you can sort of go fishing for it, sweep across to find the frequency you want. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep in the. Lucky for me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Don't do the gossip. So for me, that's the problem in that vocal, right around that above 2K, maybe 3K. And I'm able to also zero in even more on the frequency by changing the Q. And then I'll go. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pocket. And now you see the reduction that's happening, right? So let's hear it with it on. I'm going to bypass it first. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep in the. Lucky for me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Don't do the gossip. Back on my own. I it's a very subtle thing, but as you start adding EQ, as you start adding effects, as you start adding compression, these frequencies are going to jump out at you. So for me, that's what's so important. And same goes for the low end. So here at the low end part, I'm actually doing the same thing. That's controlling all that boxy feel that you get with vocals. Uh, so this is why the C6 to me is, is, is essential. I, I use it like literally on every, every vocal that I've ever worked on. After that, I follow with uh, Manny's Triple D, which I love, because it's, again, another sort of C6, but it, it's a catch-all. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. So as you can see that the harsher part, which is basically this frequency, I'll solo it for you. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. I'm hitting that frequency again. I hit it with the C6, but I like to have Manny's come after it to just to catch a little bit more. Same thing with the deboxing area. I also use that. And then I'll even go further and add a C1. And I put it in, you know, I load up the de preset. And same thing. I go through the frequencies that bother me. And you can listen to them. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the deep. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Very subtle at that frequency that I'm hitting, around 250. And then the last thing I do is usually my DSing. Now, granted, every vocal has, you know, a different need for DSing, but you always want to have a DSer there just in case. And that DSing, for all those of you who don't know, handles all the siblings, all the frequencies from seven up. You know, very bright. So I'll show you, for example, what we're doing here. Basically, it's grabbing all the S's and pulling all those S's down. Uh, and then after that, here's where 
I'm adding things to the vocal. And I, I love the API, I love the high end on the API. So if I want to brighten and give it a little shine, I'm giving it that shine after I de-est it, right? Because I controlled it and I'm able to bring that vocal up and give it that brightness that it's lacking without it bothering you. I'll play it to you without and with. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep in the. Lucky for me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Don't do the gossip. Back on my own, I done earned my respect and I trip. Right, so these things I do after I control the vocal. That's why the chain goes the way it goes. And the very end, like I said before, is the R box. And that's what brings the entire group out to the front. And I'll play it to you without it and with it. You can see what happens, but you can't do this without all the other steps first. Because if you do this now without any de-essing, without any band uh, target you know, uh, uh, compression, all those frequencies that just jumped out like that are going to jump out and bother you even more. And when you, you know, when you bring all the elements back in of the rest of the of the track, you'll be able to play and pull that vocal forward and backwards. You know, that that's where where the sweet spot for me are, are for vocals. And that's that's really the the basics of, of of a vocal chain and why I have them in the order that I have them. I control first everything I can, and then I start doing what's you know brightening things up and adding things, and then finishing out with a compressor. When mixing like uh, ad libs and uh, vocal stacks and overdubs and all that stuff, um, if it's if it's a vocal that's supporting the lead vocal, so in other words, it's a double to the vocal, uh, you want to treat it as a lead vocal. You want to keep it mono and put it, you know, behind the the lead vocal. But when it comes to ad libs and when it comes to you know sweeteners is what we call them, uh, to me, I like pushing those out into the stereo field. I like to leave the lead vocal as much as possible in the middle, unless the producer or the artist specifically want them down in the middle or, or close. I spread them out as far as I possibly can because it just opens up the stereo feel for one and it gives that vocal room to sit by itself. One thing you have to keep in mind when you do pan something out all the way, like for example, in this particular song, you can see here, in both of these cases, you see how all my, my ad-libs are spread out full stereo. You have to be careful is when you send something to stereo all the way, you're gonna hear a lot more than you would if it was down the middle with the rest of the track. So when you bring it out, uh, be mindful to pull that volume back so it doesn't overcome the lead vocal. But And in this particular session, if you can see, I actually use the doubler here, which really helps with spreading that vocal out, right? And in this case, he has whispers. Never affected, I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep in the. Lucky for me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Back on my own, I done earn my respect and I trip. So in this vocal, I had the lead down the middle, and then there's only one whisper track, right? I just went ahead and put the doubler on it to give it that stereo feel since I can't pan it out. And since this is a whisper, I'm able to, boom, there's the R box. And the R box, I squashed it to really give it that energy and really feel up front, and then push it back a little bit. And then it comes on nice and clear, you hear everything he's saying, and it's not overcoming the lead vocal in the middle of the, of the group. I hear the talk, but I'm never affected. I'm deep in my pockets. Deep in the, deep And that's how you do it. Overall, after that, you know, after the vocals controlled, after I have the eyelids panned, after the R is on the group bringing everything forward, um, you still have effects. You still have delays, you have verbs, you have flanges, you have all these things you can use to give the vocal sort of depth or fit into the feeling of the, of the song. And then a delay is always your friend. H delay, I like to have, depending on the song, a quarter uh, in ping pong, sometimes an eighth in stereo, whatever it is that sounds good with the song. And those are the little touches you you, you use to just give uh, all the vocal elements a little sparkle, a little shine, you know. And for me, I, I, I'm not big on giant effects. I just like the effect to feel like something and not stick out of the track so much. Obviously, if you want to just delay one word, you'd want to, you need to automate that one word, right? If you leave it static throughout, throughout the, throughout the, uh, throughout the mix, you're going to, every word is going to delay. Now, in certain senses, you want to use a static delay, like I use, for example, here. For me, I just came here to eat. I don't feed in the gossip. Back on my own, I done earned my respect and I tripled the profits. So I'm using this H delay and I'm using it at a triplet. And the reason for that is just so the tempo of it feels a little different. The rhythmicness of it feels a little different. And it's very low in the in the mix. It's just there to, to create, 
air to create a, a mood, just the way a, a, a verb would be used. But if I were to turn that send up, it would sound ridiculously loud. You know what I mean? So what you want to do is when you do a throw delay, when you're highlighting something, yes, in that case, you'd want to automate them. But a static delay, usually for me, is used to create an effect, to create a mood, to create a, a, a feel for the, for, the, for the vocal. I'm going to show you just real quick a, a little delay throw that I use on this verse. So that means you automate the actual scent. I have a delay set at a quarter at 145 BPM and a little bit of a high pass, a little bit of a low pass. So it has a little radio effect. So just the, the word we litty was sent to the delay. On the actual vocal, if you wanted to do that with an EQ, it's super simple. It's the same principle. You sweep everything out from the low end, everything out from the high end, and maybe, you know, 1K, maybe 2, 3K, you, you might want to bump up that and give it that, that, that radio effect. So I'm using the REQ, and you see I'm sweeping everything from 500 down, and I'm boosting a little bit here around 2K. So like I said before, and that gives you the radio effect. I'll, I'll, I'll solo it for you, and then we'll play it with, with and without. We let it, we let it, we let it, we let it, we let it. That's with it, and this is without it. We let it, we let it, we let it, we let it. Right? So you hear the delay has that same radio effect, so together. We let it, we let it, we let it, we let it. And then in context of the song. Yeah, hit a Philly and we let it, we let it, we let it. Hit a DJ Crazy said he got a section. So there's a section in the song where we wanted to use the that, uh, that T-Pain effect. And uh, we plugged in um, Waves Tune. And uh, you can see it right here. I'll play you the section real quick so you can hear it. Oh, maybe show me love, power radio too strong. From the city where you need to strap up, but they know I'm too rough. Every time I hit it right, I'm running and doing wrong. If you whip me, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, we just slam in the slam in the uh, the settings. You want the correction all the way up. You want the speed to be as fast as possible. Uh, and you know, we're just we're after that T-Pain effect. And with the waves tune uh, retune, we're able to do it super easy, and super quick. I'm going to show you the effect we used uh, uh, Waves Return to do it. Um, and obviously, you've got to find the key of the song. In this case, it's A major. Uh, and then uh, your speed uh, and your correction got to be slammed. Um, but it's fairly simple. You get the hang of it really quick. I'll, I'll solo one vocal real quick so you can hear it without it. I'm a city where you need to strap up, but they know I'm too rough. Every time I I'm a city where you need to strap up, but they know I'm too rough. Every time I hit it right, oh, round and do them wrong. That's how you do it. I was raised in the garden, slide the shade in the garden. See them snakes in the garden, never change, I'm all in. Doing drills in the garden, in the hills in the garden. No the kill in the garden, no names, no talking. Mixing medicine, I feel like so. 